So guys, in this tutorial, we're going to start doing a bit of edge work. We're going to be painting the subjacent element in the frame. We'll start off by creating a clean frame. So create a frame hold set to frame one, add a roto. We're going to roto this area by the window, create a transform, create a merge and connect the patch, drag the transforms target to the center of the rotoed area. We're going to reposition this area over the element we want to remove. Create a corner pin, deactivate it. Go to from, reposition the points on the corner of the viewer onto the corners of our patch. Reactivate the corner pin and start adjusting our patch to match in pairs. Now feather the roto by using control drag on the corners. Create a blur right below the roto node. Set the target channel to alpha. Adjust it slightly to smoothen the fall off. Now create a color correct. We're gonna adjust the gain on the midtones and the shadows to make the patch match. Create a new one to account for lighting. Create a ramp node. Set it as the mask of the color corrector. We're going to reposition the ramp points by the edges, again with the shadows and the midtones. Next, new roto node, attach it to the plate, roto the floor, add premalt, add merge node, connect this patch to the main pipe, add a transform. Now slide the patch right here. We're going to duplicate this patch and paste it on top of itself. Then we'll slide it a bit to the right. We're going to extend the feather on this patch just a bit to make it blend nicely over the other one. Add a blur node to the patch just to smoothen the fall off. Set to alpha. Copy paste it to the other one. Create a paint node right below the latest merge. Press dot. Connect the paint's background one input to it and the dot to the plate. Now select the reveal tool. Start revealing the edges without bringing back the item that we initially wanted to hide. Then using the clone tool. We're going to use the paint in technique to connect our patch to the plate. I recommend using a smaller opacity to achieve this. After doing that, you should arrive at a result that looks like this. Create a new roto node. We're going to roto this piece of the cloth, pre mold it at a transform, and connect it to the main pipe through a merge. Create a defocus, set it to RGV. We'll adjust it to match the area. Create a blur node, set it to alpha. We're going to match the blur level of the edges. Create a corner pin, deactivate it. Go to from, drag the points towards the patch. Back to the previous tab, copy from, reactivate the node. Select the top two points and slide them down. Line it up as best as you can. Create a frame hold, create a roto, roto this part of the patch. Feather it by tapping E at a pre-mold. We're going to create a new pipe here on the left side and we're going to connect it through a merge. If I toggle between the plate and the patch, nothing should pop or stand out. It has to be seamless. At a tracker, we're going to position it here. We're going to get the track, going to put it right after the pre-mold and set it to match move. For the next step, you'll need to roto these two objects. I already have them prepared here. Create a key mix below your latest merge, create a dot, connect the dot to the A input and to the plate. Now create a merge. You're going to connect the roto nodes over here. Set the operation to screen. Connect the key mixes mask input to that merge node. Create a clamp node. Connect it independently to the roto's merge. Set the minimum to 1. Create a copy node. And you're going to put it on the key mixes A input. Making sure that the copy's A source comes from the clamp. Now we're going to use an edge extend I got from Nukipedia. Link in the description. Put it right below the copy node. And we're going to start adjusting the settings one by one. So that you can see how it works. To put it simply, this will get rid of any color contamination or patterns coming from behind. If your core's last line of pixels is inconsistent or misplaced, this is not going to work. That is why it is so important to get your core right. This is looking good, however, I'm noticing that the edges are a bit dark, which makes this look a bit unnatural. We need to brighten them a bit, create a grade node right below the edge extent, create a roto, and set it as its mask. Now on the grade node, we're going to set the gamma to 1.96. We're going to draw two feather shapes, taking a guess of how strong it should be. I'd recommend adjusting by looking at the result on the plate. It should more or less look like this. Now create a key mix in the main pipe, create a dot, connect it to the A input and the dot to the plate. I like hiding the connection, so Ctrl H. Now create a merge node, connect it to the mask input, create a dot, connect it to the merges A input, then connect the dot to the clamp. Create a roto node, connect it to the B input of the merge, add a blur to it. In the roto node that we just created, we're going to roto this part of the cookie with the faint feather. We're going to bring it back as we were eating into it. Then we're going to set our blur to 18.6 to blend in our roto nicely and play that shadow as if it's coming from the cup. On the merge's A input, add another blur and set it to 3.8 to mix the brightened edges with the original core. 
Now copy the tracker that we used to the patch, set the reference frame to the current frame, which is 41, copy it as is, and paste it right below the blur that we just modified. Then paste it again and put it right below the roto that's masking the grade. And there you have it. We got a pretty realistic result going on here. If you have any questions or concerns, leave me a comment below and I'll make sure to answer. Also, please do me a favor and like the video just to make sure that like the content that I'm doing is actually helpful for you. Also, please subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of the lessons that I'm sharing with you in this channel.